Orion NASA's incredibly expensive spacecraft is slowly fading away, much like the legendary space shuttle once did. It's powerful, impressive, and reliable, but at the end of the day, it represents an aging technology that's being left behind by newer, more advanced, and more cost-effective systems. But here's the real question. If Orion is truly canceled, what could possibly take its place in future lunar missions? Surprisingly, the answer is SpaceX's Dragon. Originally built to ferry astronauts to the ISS, now emerging as NASA's most promising backup for lunar missions. So, how realistic is that idea? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Orion is perhaps the most troubled spacecraft ever built. It was born under the Constellation program, launched in 2005 during President George W. Bush's administration, with a bold goal to restore America's leadership in space exploration. The plan was to pair Orion with the Ares Wing and Ares of rockets, creating a powerful and safe launch system for long-duration missions to the ISS, the Moon, or even Mars. In other words, it was designed to be a multi-purpose spacecraft, much like what Starship aims to be today. But that bold dream quickly ran into major trouble. By 2010, the program was canceled by the former President Barack Obama due to its enormous cost, projected to exceed $100 billion, along with slow progress and concerns raised by the Congressional Budget Office that it simply wasn't cost-effective compared to commercial alternatives. Despite billions already spent, Orion was on the brink of being scrapped entirely. It was only saved thanks to Congress and lawmakers who insisted on keeping NASA's domestic crewed spaceflight capability alive. $100 billion was a staggering number, but at the time, it still seemed reasonable compared to the space shuttle program, which had cost around $200 billion in total, and that's probably why Orion managed to survive. After being frozen, Orion underwent a major restructuring starting in 2010. It was redirected into NASA's new space launch system and the Artemis program focusing on crewed missions to the moon. By 2014, Orion finally made its first uncrewed test flight, Exploration Flight. Test 1 launched atop a Delta IV heavy rocket. It reached an altitude of 5,800 kilometers, testing its heat shield and parachute system, successfully proving it could survive the intense re-entry conditions of a lunar mission. That's why, eight years later, Artemis the Frown in 2022 became such a huge success. Powerful, reliable, and tested, there's no denying Orion's capabilities. But the problem has always been the cost. Since 2006, Orion has consumed around $20. 4 billion averaging over 1.1 billion dollars per year, mostly due to technical challenges and repeated design changes after the collapse of Constellation. And now, the pressure is building again. In the FY 2020 C6 budget proposal, President Donald Trump's administration has suggested cutting NASA's funding by 24% from $24.8 billion down to $18.8 billion, aiming to phase out both SLS and Orion after Artemis III. The plan shift focused toward cheaper commercial spacecraft to save costs and push private competition forward. With that shift in strategy, attention naturally turns to one company that's already proven it can deliver, SpaceX, and its Dragon spacecraft. Why? Since 2020, Dragon has completed over 50 missions carrying both crew and cargo to the International Space Station with a success rate of 99%. Can Boeing Starliner say the same? Definitely not. And when it comes to cost, the difference is night and day. Developing Dragon only cost around $3.2 billion, of which $2. $6 billion came from NASA's contract. That's why every launch is far cheaper than a spacecraft that has already burned through $20 billion and counting. But to be fair, flying to the ISS and flying to the moon are two completely different challenges. Going beyond low Earth orbit would require some serious upgrades, especially for the Crew Dragon. Spaceflight architecture at its core is all about energy cost, or what engineers call Delta V, the change in velocity needed for a mission. For a round trip to the moon, you need roughly 6 km per second of Delta V. Right now, Crew Dragon only has about 2.5 km per second, from its Draco thrusters not nearly enough to make the journey. So, upgrading the propulsion system would be the first step. Next, there's the heat shield. When returning from lunar orbit, re-entry speeds reach 11 km is. But the good news is, 
Dragon's Pika X heat shield has been designed for exactly that speed since 2010. Meanwhile, Orion uses Avcoat, a heavier, older material from Apollo, which worked in EFT-1 and Artemis-1, but suffered 40 to 60% ablation, was severely charred, and could not be reused. Pika X, by contrast, is 30% lighter than Avcoat has passed 11 km s plasma arc jet tests on Earth, and is designed for around 3 to 5 reuses. So, Dragon doesn't need a new heat shield, just a real flight test. Then there's the life support system. The spacecraft must keep astronauts alive and comfortable for the entire trip. Reports suggest that Dragon can currently support four crew members for about seven to ten days, as demonstrated during Polaris Dawn, a five-day private mission, commanded by Jared Isaacman. That might not be enough for a full lunar mission. For comparison, Apollo was rated for 14 days Orion for 21, and most Apollo missions lasted between 8 and 12.5 days. So, technically, Dragon could make it work with a two-person crew, leaving little room for error. To achieve that, its life support capacity, including oxygen water and CO2 scrubbers, would need to be expanded, which of course means more weight and less cabin space. Dragon's pressurized volume is only 9.3 cubic meters. It's small, but it can still fit up to seven people. For a lunar mission, optimizing that space for just two astronauts would make sense leaving extra room for supplies and critical systems. In short, if SpaceX can overcome the Delta V challenge and strengthen Dragon's life support endurance, the Crew Dragon could genuinely become a short-term lunar solution faster and far cheaper than anything NASA has today. So, let's imagine it has been upgraded. How exactly would Dragon replace Orion for a lunar launch? Of course, if Orion is canceled, Dragon can't just ride on SLS. The docking interface is completely different. The only logical launch vehicles would be Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy. And between the two, Falcon Heavy is the clear choice for sending Dragon toward the moon. Here's how it could work in the simplest and most realistic way. Falcon Heavy, powered by 27 Merlin engines, produces over 22 million newtons of thrust, enough to lift 63 tons into low Earth orbit about 200 kilometers high. A fully loaded Dragon, even with its protective fairing and adapter, weighs less than 16 tons. That's barely a quarter of the rocket's capacity, plenty of margin to spare. Once in low Earth orbit, Falcon Heavy's upper stage, optimized for vacuum, could reignite to accelerate from 7.8 km s to roughly 11 km s, the speed needed to escape Earth's gravity and head for the moon. This critical burn, known as translunar injection, could be done entirely by the existing second stage, no extra boosters, no complex refueling steps. As Dragon approaches the moon, its Draco thrusters could take over for fine-tuning and orbital insertion. They're small, yes, but more than capable of making precise adjustments to guide the spacecraft into a stable lunar orbit. Compared to NASA's SLS, which can haul up to 95 tons to low Earth orbit, Falcon Heavy is lighter and simpler, but also far cheaper and far more reusable. While SLS needs an additional upper stage to push Orion toward the moon, Falcon Heavy uses its standard second stage, a design that's already been tested and proven in multiple missions. In other words, Dragon on Falcon Heavy wouldn't just be possible, it would be elegant, efficient, and affordable. Continuing with the mission after Falcon Heavy successfully placed Dragon into lunar orbit, the capsule begins a series of fine orbit adjustments using its small Draco thrusters. The goal? To precisely match its orbital phase with the Starship HLS, which had been launched separately. This orbital choreography takes hours. NRHO, or Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit, is massive, and every maneuver must be calculated to avoid wasting Delta V. The crew checks their laser radar, star tracker cameras, and relative navigation systems to prepare for the rendezvous, closing the gap from hundreds of kilometers down to mere tens of meters. As the two spacecraft approach, Dragon switches to proximity operations. Using LiDAR and cameras, it's guided partially by ground control, but mostly operates autonomously docking through NASA's NDS mechanism, the same system it uses at the ISS, or with Starship in LEO. Once hard dock is confirmed, the airlock pressure is equalized. The crew opens the hatch, inspects the seal, and transfers to Starship HLS. While waiting for the landing window, often several days because NRHO only aligns near the moon periodically, Dragon maintains a stable orbit with minimal maneuvers to conserve propellant. 
The crew also runs checks on backup systems, including the Super Draco abort engines, which in this scenario could bring them straight back to Earth if needed. Starship HLS then undocks from Dragon, uses its Raptor engines to lower itself into low lunar orbit, and performs a soft landing with methane oxygen thrusters. The surface mission lasts about six to seven days moonwalks to collect samples, deploy scientific instruments and test rovers or ISRU technology to extract water from ice. Once complete, the ascent stage of Starship launches back to NRHO rendezvous and docks with Dragon again. The crew transfers back carrying roughly 100 kilograms of precious lunar samples, while the ascent stage is either left behind or disposed of into a heliocentric orbit to prevent space debris. Finally, Dragon fires its trunk service module to execute a trans-Earth injection, burn a powerful push using Draco thrusters that sends them out of lunar orbit and homeward a journey of three to four days. Sounds exciting, but that old architecture is still pretty complex. Dragon has to dock with Starship multiple times. So, what if Elon wanted a much simpler setup? That plan is essentially the simplified Starship HLS currently in development to meet Artemis requirements. It would launch from Starbase with a Crew Dragon either inside its cargo bay or mounted on the nose, taking advantage of Starship's 150-ton LEO lift capacity to carry lunar fuel and surface equipment. Sure, there's a trade-off in payload mass since HLS has to carry Dragon 2, but the setup is much simpler. Once Starship reaches lunar orbit via translunar injection, it automatically releases Dragon into a stable parking orbit. The crew stays on Starship to descend to the lunar surface for a few days of activity. EVAs deploying the Viper rover, testing ISRU oxygen production, and completing core Artemis objectives. After the mission, Starship lifts off rendezvous with Dragon in orbit using the A-Pass docking system. The crew transfers to Dragon and Dragon heads straight back to Earth, splashing down off Baja, just like a typical ISS return.